Hello, and welcome to Agrosa of Physics. Today is day 134, and what I'd like to do today is calculate mass defect and binding energy. But first, what we need to do is go back to chemistry. And if you remember from chemistry, you had elemental symbols, and each symbol was listed in different ways. For example, helium on the periodic table was listed as helium, four on the top, and then two on the bottom. And the atomic symbol was HE. The atomic number um, is the bottom value, in this case two, and the atomic mass was the top value, in this case four. And all these were based on the carbon 12. And that was what we define the atomic mass unit as. The atomic mass unit, um, in this case, would be four for helium. Now, of course, it's not exactly four, but for the value that we're going to use for today, we're doing a 4-2 helium. Different isotopes may have different values for the mass number, but if you remember, the atomic number, the bottom number, has to be the same. If you have helium, it has to be a 2. Hydrogen has to be a 1. The atomic mass on the top can be different for different isotopes. Now, like I said, the atomic mass unit is based on carbon-12, and it actually has a value in kilograms. One AMU, or one U, is 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And that can be rounded to 1.66 or 1.7, depending upon um, what textbook you use. But that value can allow us to convert the four, the atomic mass, into kilograms. Now, that value for the nucleus, and that's telling us what the mass of the nucleus is. That nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. Now, the way we can figure out the protons is by using the atomic number. The number is how many protons are in the nucleus. The atomic mass is the combination of the protons and the neutrons. So you subtract the top number from the bottom. That tells you the number of neutrons. Now, the problem is, we're constantly told that the neutrons and the protons have the same mass. But when we're dealing with mass defect, we actually have to go out to more precision. In fact, the proton and neutron have different values. For the proton, it's 1.007825 atomic mass units, or U's. For the neutron, it's 1.008665 U's. The proton is slightly smaller than the neutron, or the neutron slightly larger. So here's what we can do. If you take the atomic mass, which is the top number on the elemental symbol, and you multiply it by the conversion to um, kilograms, what you can find is the mass of the nucleus. If you were to find the mass of each individual proton and neutron, it would be more than the mass of the nucleus. In fact, the mass defect is the difference between the value that we measure for the nucleus and the value of the individual components. So what you need to do is, is be precise in this. We can't round to the tenths. We can't round to a whole number. We have to keep it as far out as possible. And in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers past the decimal point. You need to use, use that. For example, in our case, if we look up the helium nucleus in an appendix or a, a chart, we get 4.002603 atomic mass units. So that's the mass of the nucleus of the helium atom. We also would call that an alpha particle. If we were to find the mass of the individual components, we get 4.032980U. They're not the same. In fact, there's a mass defect of 0.030377 U's. The sum of the nucleus is that much less than the sum of the individual components. Now, why is that? Well, it takes energy to keep the nucleus together, which we call the strong force. So that mass defect accounts for the binding energy binding the nucleus together. Now, how can we find that value? Well, this is based on Einstein and his equals mc squared equation. So the energy that we can find to hold the nucleus together is based on the mass defect. And that mass is actually converted to energy using e equals mc squared. Now, how do we find e equals mc squared? Well, e is the energy. m is the mass defect 
but it has to be in kilograms, so we have to convert to kilograms. And then C is the speed of light squared. So the E equals MC squared equation that Einstein came up with is mass times speed of light squared. And what we can find is the energy that is required to hold the nucleus together. That's called the binding energy. And what we first have to do is find how much mass is less in the total nucleus than individual in the individual parts. Now, a couple of things for conversions. We're going to have to convert um, electron volts to joules, so 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And there's actually a direct conversion from AMUs to electron volts. And one AMU is 931 mega electron volts, which is times 10 to the 6 electron volts. So you may be asked to convert mass defect directly to mega electron volts. And you just use the conversion of 931. What I'd like to do at this point is a couple of sample problems because talking about the mass defect and showing you some slides with numbers on it doesn't mean the same as actually showing you how to do it. So what I'd like to do is take out the whiteboard now and do a couple of sample problems. Thank you. Okay. Now, mass defect is a byproduct of the strong force. And basically, the particles that make up the nucleus, the protons and the neutrons, have a certain mass. If we actually measure that as a whole, the total mass is less than the sum of the parts. So it's less than the individuals. And I'll make it a individuals. So if the protons and neutrons, for example, let's say we have protons that add up to five and neutrons that add up to four, let's just say, we'll say atomic mass units, total mass of the particles is nine. If we put the nucleus together and measure that, that may only be eight. Well, that one difference of AMUs is what we call the mass defect. Now, of course, I'm using simplified numbers right now. We'll do a specific question momentarily, but the mass defect would be one. So the total nucleus is less than the sum of the parts. That mass defect is actually matter that's converted to energy to hold the nucleus together. And we use Einstein's equation equals mc squared to calculate it. Now, of course, the mass is not going to be 1. It's going to be in kilograms. And we're going to have to convert that. But basically, matter is converted to energy that becomes the binding energy. And it's holding the nucleus together. It acts as like a force field holding these positive charges from breaking apart. Now, in terms of conversions, we have a few. One atomic mass unit, or 1U, is 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. In our reference table, that's listed as a less precise number, and the precision is listed, in fact, as a conversion directly to AMUs. So we say one universal mass unit is 931 times 10 to the 2 mega electron volts. So this conversion will allow us to calculate the mass defect to an energy bypassing the e equals mc squared term, and it just gives us a conversion factor. Remember, m is mega, which is 10 to the 6. 931 is 9.31, so it's 931, or 9.31 times 10 to the 2. Now also, we learned in chemistry that the proton and the neutron were about the same mass. But for this application, we need to take into account a more precise value. The proton is 1.007825 U's, and the neutron, a little heavier, 1.008665 AMUs, so a slightly larger value for the neutron. 
But the bottom line is the mass defect is merely the difference between the total mass of the particles inside the nucleus and the nucleus itself. So a simplified version would be if it's 5 plus 4, that's 9 total units. The nucleus is only 8. The mass defect is 1. In order to figure out the energy, we, we would use the E equals mc squared equation. And remember, c is the speed of light. So it would be mass times the speed of light squared, and that would be the energy that's holding the nucleus together. When we're doing actual problems, we need to be more precise. So 1.6605 is our U. And we could even convert directly to electron volts, which is a unit of energy, using 9.31 times 10 to the 2 mega electron volts. Or what I like to use is 931 mega electron volts is 1U. So that is our basic concept. And we'll do a sample problem now. All right, we're going to look at a sample problem dealing with mass defect, and we're going to look at a boron atom. And boron is 10, 5 in the periodic table. And basically, that means the atomic number is 5, the atomic mass is 10. And if we look at our chart, we know that that means we have a difference of 10 minus 5, or 5 neutrons. So the boron nucleus has 5 protons and 5 neutrons. We just subtract the atomic mass and the atomic number. Now, 5 protons have a total mass of 5.039125 AMUs. And the way I found that is I used the mass of a single proton, which was 1.007825U, and I multiply it by 5. The neutron have a total mass of 5.043325 AMUs, and that's because... The neutron has a mass of 1.008665 AMUs. So each of these sections has a mass. And what we need to do is add them together. So when we add them together, we get 10.08245 AMUs. So that's the total mass of the individual pieces. These 10 particles add up to that. Now, the actual mass, though, is 10.012937 AMUs. And the difference is what we call the mass defect. So if I look at my calculator, 10.08245 minus 10.012. 937, I get a difference of 0 0.069513 U's. That's our mass defect. Now, if I convert that to kilograms, I could figure out the binding energy. Now, if you remember from before, we discussed the conversion to AMUs to kilograms. And one AMU is 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. The precision is a little more precise because we're dealing with more precision for our uh, particles themselves. So 0 0.069513 <clears throat> times 1.6605e negative 27. So the mass defect in kilograms is 1.154 times 10 to the negative 28 kilograms. Well, e equals mc squared can get us the binding energy. So that number times 3e8 squared gets us a binding energy of 1.04 times 10 to the negative 11 
joules. Now, if we want, we can convert to electron volts, which is 1.6 10 to the negative 19 joules is 1 eV. So divide that by 1.6 E negative 19. And you get the energy in electron volts is 6.5 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 electron volts. And that is the binding energy for the boron atom. Now, we could have done the following. We had mass defect here, and if you remember, we discussed the conversion directly to mega electron volts. And the conversion is as follows. 931 mega electron volts equals 1 AMU. So if we take the U and we multiply by 931, so 0.069513 times 931, we get 64.7 mega electron volts. And if we remember, 10 to the 7 is not mega, 10 to the 6 is. So if we bring this over one place, we'd have 65 times 10 to the 6 electron volts. We can replace the 10 to the 6 with an M, and we have 65 mega electron volts. So the 64.7, if we round, they're the same answer. So that's two ways to find the energy in electron volts, in joules, and finding the mass defect. That's one comprehensive problem for mass defect. On an assessment, it would probably be simpler or a portion of that problem.